guys, welcome to Motorsport Stories first ever video. We're a brand new channel looking at the stories and histories of motorsports of all sorts. If you like this video and want to see more of the same, please hit the like and subscribe button. In this video, we're looking at facts about the 24 hours of Le Mans race, the oldest and arguably the most famous endurance race in the world. Le Mans, if you didn't know, is a town of around 143,000 people, located around 200 kilometers from Paris. Records show the town of Le Mans existed in some form or the other since at least the 1st century BC. Today the town of Le Mans is synonymous with the world famous race, but before making its mark as a racing mecca, it was known as home of the Gallic Cenomani tribe in the 1st century BC. The town is famous for its beautiful Gothic St. Julian Cathedral, built between the 6th and 14th century, and was an important part of the Angevin Empire. The race was the brainchild of two journalists, Charles Ferreau and George Durand in 1923. At the time, motor racing was purely about the speed of the cars racing over a couple of hours. Ferreau and Durand wanted to challenge that aspect of the sport by developing a race that rewarded endurance and reliability as well as speed. The race was originally supposed to be contested over three years, but this was dropped in 1928 and since then a winner has been announced after each race. The Circuit de la Sarte is where the race takes place. It's a mix of track and public roads and is around 13.6 kilometers long. The track has had 16 major design changes since the 1920s, but has largely kept the famous landmarks that it's renowned for. Amongst these is the Mulsanne Strait, where cars regularly hit over 300 kilometers or 186 miles an hour, the Tetra Rouge, the Arnage Corner, and the Ford Corvette and Porsche curves. The distance traveled on the circuit during the 24 hour race has increased exponentially since the 20s, from a distance of 2670 kilometers or 1670 miles in 1928, at a lap time of 8 minutes and 7 seconds by Henry Birkin in his Bentley, to the current record of 5410 kilometers or 3361 miles at a lap time of only 3 minutes and 17 seconds by Andre Lotterer in his Audi R15 TDI in 2010. Though there have been exceptions to this rule, for the majority of the race's history, Le Mans has almost always started at 4pm local time on the Saturday of the second weekend in June. The June heat adds an extra toll to the already intense race. Traditionally, the race has started with what has become known as the Le Mans Start, whereby the drivers would run from the pit wall to the opposite side of the track, jump in their cars, start their engines and drive off. This led to many drivers driving the first few laps without being fully harnessed in their cars. This spectacular, but wholly unsafe practice, was the cause of many of the race's fatalities. It also led to some innovations in order to gain a slight advantage, with Porsche moving the ignition to the left of the steering wheel, allowing its drivers to use their right hand to change gears when starting off. The ignition switch of all current Porsche vehicles are set up this way. In 1969, Jackie Ickes defied the standing start convention and strolled to his car. Although he was nearly hit by a competitor, he went on to win the race and the standing start was dropped the following year. Nowadays, each car will have three drivers each driver taking the steering wheel for a few hours then handing over the car to one of their teammates. Throughout the years, regulations determining the amount of drivers as well as the number of hours they're allowed to drive have changed. Attempts have also been made to have only one driver per car for the entire race. In 1949, the American Luigi Canetti managed to drive 23 hours in total with his teammate Lord Selson only taking control of the car for roughly an hour. This record also marked Ferrari's first of many Le Mans wins. This practice was later banned. Until the 1980s, there were teams in which only two drivers competed, but by the end of the decade, the rules were changed to stipulate that at least three drivers must drive each car. Since the 90s, regulations have been brought in to ensure no driver could drive over 240 minutes over a six hour period or for a total of 14 hours, making each driver's contribution all the more important. In terms of driver's success, Denmark's Tom Christensen is the most successful driver in the history of Le Mans, winning a total of 9 times, 6 of them consecutively. Jackie X of Belgium follows next with 6 wins. In total, the UK has the most winning drivers with 30, followed by France with 29 and Germany with 19. Since its inception, Le Mans has been in a notoriously dangerous race. In a black day for motorsport in 1955, the world witnessed the worst accident in motorsport history at Le Mans. The crash started when Jaguar driver Mike Hawthorne pulled to the right side of the track in front of Austin Healey driver Lance Macklin and started braking for his pit stop. Macklin swerved out from behind a slower Jaguar into the path of LeVay, who was passing on the left in his much faster Mercedes-Benz 300 SLR. LeVay rear-ended Macklin at high speed, overriding Macklin's car and launching his own car through the air. LeVay's car skipped over a protective berm at 200 km an hour and impacted within the spectator area, throwing him onto the track where he was instantly killed and sending large pieces of debris into a packed spectator's area in front of the grandstand. 83 spectators lost their lives in the accident and a further 178 were injured. The incident was the cause of Mercedes withdrawal from motor racing until 1989. 
No one was the judge at fault for the accident. It was blamed on the layout of the track, which was designed at a time when the speed of race cars in the 1950s were not imagined. The ACO, the organizing body for Le Mans, made many alterations in the aftermath of the disaster. However, even today, the race carries great risk. With the latest fatality occurring in 2013, when Alan Simonson crashed his Aston Martin and died later in hospital. Ferrari was the dominating force of Le Mans at the start of the 1960s, winning an unprecedented five times in a row from 1960 to 1965. Team boss Enzo Ferrari viewed Le Mans as just as, if not more important than Formula 1, ensuring all Ferrari's resources were made available for his racing division. After a failed attempt by Ford to purchase the commercially struggling Ferrari, Henry Ford II made it a point to outcompete Ferrari at Le Mans, finally doing so in 1966 with the GT40 Mark II. This was the first time an American manufacturer won the race proper. Ford's GT40 went on to win the race for the rest of the decade and ushered in what was known as the golden era in motorsport. So, we've all seen race drivers celebrate their victory by spraying a bottle of champagne over themselves and everyone else on the podium, right? Well, this tradition actually originated at Le Mans in the 60s. In 1967, the post-race victory ceremony saw the Ford driving race winner, Dan Gurney, spraying his champagne on the people surrounding him rather than drinking it, creating a new tradition in motorsport and a massive waste of good champagne. There you have it, folks. Seven facts you may or may not have known about Le Mans. Have you got anything interesting to add? Let us know in the comments below. We'll have a new video every two weeks, so like I said, please hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see us cover more interesting stories in the world of motorsport.